Hello, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you're watching this from. My name is DK Chukwumiriji, and it's my pleasure to be here at the World Igbo Conference 2021. Uh, I am a poet and a spoken word artist, and permit me to speak to the theme uh, of this conference, A New Dawn, Rebirth, Renewal, and Regeneration. In Chino Achebe's novel, Things Fall Apart, Okonkwo's character is uh, contrasted with that of his father, Unoka. Unoka likes to play the flute, will not tend to his farm, is squirmish at the size of blood and can borrow and then forget to repay. For these reasons, in Okonkwo's mind, Unoka is not a real man. In fact, it is the deep sense of shame Okonkwo feels towards his father that drives his own hypermasculinity, a drive that would eventually lead to tragedy. For had Okonkwa been a little more like his father? On that day when he came, Ifuna ran towards him crying, my father, my father, they have killed me. On that day, had Okonkwa been a little more like Onoka, he would not have held up his cutlass and struck down that boy that called him father. And in so doing, triggered the series of events that would eventually lead to his demise. This is a cautionary tale about the importance of embracing all aspects of our heritage, and not just the parts that fit the image we're trying to push in the moment. Uh, it is important that at any point in time, we should be able to draw lessons from the full spectrum of our heritage. For in the diversity of our stories, we'll find things that reaffirm what we believe in the moment, yes, but we'll also find things that cause us to question what we believe in the moment. In the diversity of our stories, we'll find inspiration to continue as we are, yes, but we'll also find inspiration for when the need arises to reinvent ourselves, as indeed the need has arisen today. Today, where we find ourselves as a people in danger of being reduced to the single story of anger and bitterness over the war. Today, where we find ourselves as part of a nation uh, struggling to redefine itself in ways that would allow it and its constituent parts to flourish. Today, when we find ourselves as members of a global community dealing with a pandemic of epic proportions, each one fighting to find the faith to go out there and live again. Today, the need for mining our personal histories to find stories that inspire us to rise above adversity has never been greater. Today, the need for remembering has never been greater. So today, as in Dibu, as heirs to a rich heritage that is as capable as any other heritage of inspiring the human spirit today, as in Dibu, let us remember. Let us remember that this land, delicately wedged between the River Niger and the Cross River, is not just the birthplace of Biafra. This is also the birthplace of the Ekwe, of the Udu, of the Ogene. When they come together on festive occasions to herald the emergence of masquerades, this is the land of the Ujili, of Udugwanyame, of Mbadiki. This is the land of the music that accompanies Nukumo, Aniti Mawinanea. <laughs> this is the land of the masquerade, of the new masquerade of a collection of creatives who, after a devastating war, decided to lift up 
the spirit of their people through their art. This is the land of Cletus, of Zebrudiah, of Nati, of Ovuleria, of James, Iroha, driving out of NTA Channel 6 to find a young lady at the gate haggling with a banana seller for her change. This is the land of that young lady, an epic woman who would go on to become Nigeria's lady of songs. But her journey to stardom began that day in the city of elephants with a chance encounter with the producer of a TV sitcom who did not ask her her state of origin or her tribe, who did not ask her whether she was Christian or Muslim, who simply asked her, can you act? It was this act of meritocracy in the city of Abba that gave Christy Essien Ibukwe her first big break. But this was not the first. Neither would it be the last time a woman shaped in the southeast would go on to shake the rest of the country, for this is the land of Onyeko Nguyen, of Dora Kunyeli, of Aruma Ote. This is the land of Ikonne, of Wanedi, of Mugu, the land of a battle cry raised with the leaves of the palm tree, summoning housewives from Uyo, from Owere, from Opobo to war. This is the land of the Abba Women's Rebellion. So if we fought in the Biafran War, it is also because there is a strand of idealism tightly woven into our cultural DNA, for this is the land of the Ekumiku. Our uninterrogated bushes are littered with evidence of how long it took the British to subdue our villages, of how fierce it was, our hunger for freedom, yes. It was our people that jumped out of that slave ship on the eastern coast of the United States, in Georgia, at Dunbar Creek. It was our people that jumped into those marshes, choosing death over slavery, inspiring songs of hope and defiance in African-American culture. Swing low, sweet chariot. Coming for to carry me home. These are our songs that our struggle has never been against any race or tribe or culture. No, our struggle has always been for the principles and ideals that we hold dear. That is the source of our strength. That is the meaning of Jidolfo that we do not fight wars of blame. Before the British came with their common law traditions, with their fancy magazine, he who comes to equity must come with clean hands. Before they came and taught us these things in the classrooms they built for us, we knew them already. That is the meaning of Jidolfo. That is the meaning of Ahe Mebri Wandi Biakariyobubuya. For this is the land where we did not sell chief tenancy titles, where no matter your status or wealth in town, when you came down to the village for the Omonna meeting, you knew where to sit. This is our heritage. These are our stories that in our community meetings, anybody can speak. Any view can be expressed and countered. No matter to whom it belongs, no matter by whom it is rejected, that is the meaning of Ibuenwegeze that our respect for the right of the individual to express himself or herself runs deep. That is why from Achebe to Adichie, we flourish in the art of self-expression. We flourish in the art of storytelling. This is the land of our nature market literature. Before we were branded as a mercantile people, as a tribe of traders, as a culture of money bags in which unconscionable materialism is king, let us not forget that it was the writing of a story, the publication of a book that put us on the map. Let us not forget that Namdi Azikiwe had two master's degrees, that Kenneth Onwokadike went to Fora Bay in Sierra Leone, King's College in London, and became before the age of institutionalized tribalism became 
the first vice chancellor of Nigeria's premier university, the University of Ibadan. Let us not forget the intricacy, the complexity in Okibo's poetry. That we are not just a my content and on a high sea people know. Our existence does not revolve around Aria Aria and Ochanja. As important as these markets are in our cultural universe, let us not forget that there is only one University of Nigeria, and it is in Nsoka. For this is the land of Pius Okibu, of Arthur Wankwo, of Elizabeth Isichi, of Anya O Anya. We think. We introspect. This is the land of Israel Iweka. Iwobusi, builder of Iweka Road on Ija, whose greatest legacy has turned out to be the writing of that book in 1922, the first book written in Hebrew. Yes, we came to Western education late, but we came strong. And that is why in just under 15 years, Enugu went from being a scattered collection of villages by a plateau in 1914 to becoming the administrative capital of the Southern Protectorate by 1928. Yes, it was the coal. Yes, it was the railway line first from Potakot and then all the way to Kano. But it was also the influx of people, of semi-skilled workers, of teachers, of clerical workers from all over the country, from all over Igbo land that was responsible for Enugu's boom. A boom that was felt throughout the region as villages quickly turned to towns in the fastest rate of urbanization the country had seen, powered not just by palm oil, but also by the products of schools like Hope Wadel Kalaba, Government College Umwahe, CKC on Nature, Crowder Memorial Lelelemo. It was this potent combination of the intellectual and the entrepreneurial of the creative and the commercial, that was the fuel that powered our extraordinary growth. That was why we did not die out in the war. In addition to Gowon's benevolence and the inter-ethnic friendships that survived the conflicts, that was why we did not die out in the war. Because we followed the opportunity wherever it led, to Lagos, to Kano, to Meduguri. It is the bravery of the migrants to go where the markets are. It is the resilience, of the, um, um, the resilience of the apprenticeship system to proactively nurture the next generation. It is the commitment of the diaspora. It is the commitment of the diaspora to not leave anyone behind. It is the resolve of the children of the soil to never leave the motherland in destitution. And a sinul law, dumma. Paul Easy. This is why there are so many millionaires in Newe. It is because a generation of Igbos made a conscious decision to look past the past and follow the opportunities of their day into the future. You see, the magic of our success is not in the dialects we speak, whether we say Nodani or we say Tukural. The magic of our success is not in the food we eat, whether it is Gioko or often Salah or Opa. The magic of our success is not in the Ishiago or the Akwete. No. The magic of our success is in the fact that we believe in individualism. That the son should make his own way in life and not just ride on the wings of the father. That the daughter should define herself for herself and not just inherit the status of the mother. The magic of our success is in the fact that our geography made natural economic migrants of so many of us and the culture of the migrant anywhere in the world is the culture of hard work, fearlessness and ingenuity. The magic is in the fact that we believe in multiculturalism. As a people who often find themselves in the midst of others, we understand the importance of speaking multiple languages, of blending in, we understand the necessity for cultural fluidity. The magic is in the fact that we do not come from a long line of kings and queens. No, we come from a long tradition of village square debates, of town hall meetings, of finding consensus through the chaotic process of hearing everybody out. This 
is what has brought us this far. This culture of applying oneself, that is what atilogo means. To commit yourself to learning the art of dance to the point that when you dance, you dance with so much skill, so much flair, so much swagger, that the onlooker swears you are dancing with magic. The culture of jumping back onto one's feet and venturing out again. That is what the Enugu Rangers represent, that team of the 1970s that helped Ndibu jump back on their feet, venturing out again on behalf of a region to compete. The culture of appropriating cultures that sought to oppress us. That is what Ngilibo represents, to do it like Achebe, to colonize the language of the colonizer, to take whatever life throws at us and convert it into part of our creative process, to use the same force that tries to push us down, to use that same force to propel ourselves up. That is what has carried us through. That is what will carry us through. The knowledge that our heritage are not artifacts, for artifacts would rot and rust. Our heritage, that knowledge that our heritage is not food and drinks, for food and drinks will spoil and decay. The knowledge that our heritage is not the mud huts of our ancestors, for the way we build houses must evolve. The knowledge that our heritage is not language, for language is the vehicle, but the driver is the spirit. This is what will carry us through the knowledge that at its core, our heritage, our spiritual values rooted in our very humanity, that at its core, our heritage, our eternal values, that over the years have found expression in the primordial wisdom of our sayings and the philosophical depth of our names. There is enough in this world to satisfy all our needs. But there is not enough in this world to satisfy all our wants. Therefore, we must preserve the delicate balance that protects life on this planet. In order to do this, the lion must tolerate the deer. The deer must tolerate the grass. We must accommodate each other by respecting the boundaries imposed on our humanity by natural law. Mberedeke Jamadike do not be moved by their posturing and packaging and boasting. Look, sudden calamity will reveal those amongst us who are truly strong. Live your life with purpose, knowing that in the lineage of a warrior, warriors will never be lacking. Onyekwe chiekwe. Ultimately, your fate in life is the echo of your own voice. These truths are our heritage. For culture is merely the form. Culture is merely the body. It is the truth that is the spirit. And as long as we know the truths embedded in the wooden frame of the offer, as long as we remember the values that at a specific point in time in our history uh, found expression in the particular form of insibidi. As long as we understand what our fathers meant when they said, When they said that since the hunter has learned to shoot without missing, the bird must learn to fly without perching. When they said that to appreciate the dance of a masquerade, you cannot attempt to watch it standing inflexibly rooted to one spot, that as the masquerade moves, you too must move. As long as we understand what our fathers meant when they said this, then no matter the calamity that befalls us today or tomorrow, all will never be lost. For in retaining the knowledge of our true heritage, We retain the capacity eternally to reinvent ourselves. In retaining the knowledge of our true heritage, we retain the capacity to reincarnate. And this is how culture, a true and deep understanding of culture, can be mined in times of uncertainty 
so that a people can perpetually regenerate themselves. Thank you.